Hey everyone, Brady from texturelabs.org here with 10 tips to elevate your layer style effects. And what we're looking at here is actually all live type with just regular layer effects, no filters. And it's not even as complicated as it looks. Most of these are drop shadows to create this cast shadow effect, which we'll take a look at. We'll also check out how to get this nice illustrated style highlight, a bunch more stuff. And I'm just gonna throw everything at this one piece of text. But of course, all these tips can be applied individually to whatever you might be working on. I'll quickly point out the size of this document, 3840 by 2160, just so you can get a sense of the scale of things. And the first thing we're gonna focus on is getting that really nice, glossy, kind of rounded highlight on black text. This is a fairly easy look to pull off, but it's not necessarily what you would expect. I'm gonna double click on the layer to open up the layer styles panel. And while this seems like something you might accomplish with the bevel and emboss effect, you can't really get that rounded organic highlight out of bevel and emboss. So that brings us to tip number one, don't let the names of the effects be a limitation. And that's partly because the truth is a number of these effects are very closely related to each other, very similar to each other, but each one with different default settings and each one with different little bells and whistles. So they're actually kind of interchangeable. For example, you have the inner glow effect and at its default, it does pretty much what it sounds like. It creates these blurry white shapes based on the edges of the layer. Inner glow has a nice option to set the glow to originate either from the center or the edge. However, the inner shadow effect, if I change it to screen mode and make it white, it pretty much is the same as the inner glow. The difference here is that on this effect, you can't change between edge and center. It's basically stuck on edge mode, but what you can do here is change the distance from the edge. And for this effect, what I need is a quote unquote inner glow, but I'm gonna use inner shadow instead so I can bring this distance up to 35 and I'll keep it simple and make the size 35 as well. So if you can develop an understanding of what each of these effects actually does and kind of untether yourself from the names, it does free you up to do a lot of different things. It'll make sense why I need this offset glow in a moment as we get to tip number two, duplicate and stack up effects using the plus button. So that's probably an obvious one, but it is really, really useful. Doing that creates a duplicate of the effect exactly as you have it, and it doesn't reset to default values or anything. Now I have two inner shadows, and the one on top I want to be more of a classic inner shadow. So I'm gonna flip it back from screen to multiply and make it black again. And then I'm gonna take the distance here down to zero, and this time I'll bring the choke value up a bit, maybe to 20 pixels. So I've got two inner shadows, one light, one dark, and they're kind of offset from each other. One more effect to achieve this cartoon highlight, and that brings us to tip number three. I guess it's a tip, but it's more of something I want to point out. The effects get applied here from bottom to top. So almost like regular layers in a document, drop shadow is going to sit at the bottom, outer glow will be on top of that, etc., etc., etc. And it's useful to keep that in mind to guide you when you're creating a look here, but it's often also a problem. Like in this case, what I really want to do is apply a color overlay on top of these two inner shadows. Well, there are two ways to solve this. The first one is what you might call the soft solution to this problem. Tip number four, the stroke effect is incredibly versatile. The stroke effect can actually function like an outer glow, an inner glow, an inner shadow, a gradient overlay, a pattern overlay. There are so many options here. I really recommend experimenting with this effect and just getting familiar with everything it can do. In this case, I'm gonna use the stroke effect as a color overlay. And here, I want the color to be 50% gray. Then I'm gonna drag up the size till it fills the text completely. And I need to turn on this overprint option to really take advantage of the blend modes. What I'm gonna do is change the blend mode to hard mix. So this is a bit of a bonus tip. Many of you guys will have heard me say this before, but it's just so useful. The color gray set to hard mix acts exactly like a threshold adjustment. A 50% gray value is gonna be a threshold set right in the middle. And then making that gray lighter or darker is kind of like sliding the threshold adjustment up and down, picking up more or less of that highlight effect. And one quick note, I'm gonna bring the opacity from 100 to just 99%. That's gonna smooth it out just a touch and clean up those aliased pixels that a threshold adjustment generally creates. 
All right, well, that's kind of a cool effect, totally non-destructive, and I think because you don't have that telltale look of the bevel and emboss effect, it reads a little bit more like a piece of vector art or kind of hand illustrated. If we wanted to put a little texture over this, that could be a finished piece of artwork, but let's not stop here. We're gonna keep going with the layer effects to give it some color and some dimension. If you're enjoying this tutorial so far, please do hit the like button. That just helps the video to get ranked here on YouTube, so thank you for that. All right, well, if I want to take this out of black and white and make it red, a very simple way to do that would be to use the color overlay effect. And of course, we run into that same problem again. Color overlay is under all these effects. And I could actually just use stroke as a color overlay again with that same solution as last time. But there's another more durable solution to this problem. We'll call this the hard solution. Tip number five, use a group folder to bake your effects. I'll show you what I mean. If I hit OK and apply these effects, then I drag this text into a group folder. Then I can double click on the group folder and it's almost like I get to start from scratch with a whole clean palette of effects on the group folder. So this has some of the benefits of a smart object. It kind of flattens those effects into a single object. But unlike a smart object, you do still have the live text and effects here at your disposal. So let's use the color overlay effect here and I will make that red and I'm gonna set it to screen mode just so it brings the black areas up to red. All right, moving on to tip number six, get rad with the drop shadow effect. So there are a couple different looks you can get out of the drop shadow effect. Since it's one of the effects you can make copies of with the plus button, we'll use it in a few different ways here. I'm gonna start with a basic drop shadow, but I'll bring the opacity all the way up, the size all the way down, and I'll bring the distance to about 20. So with a really crisp shadow like that, it's almost more like an extruded edge than a shadow. Let's make a copy of that one, and I'm gonna select the one on the bottom. It's a little confusing when you make a copy, it selects the top one, but I'm gonna work with the bottom one, and I'm gonna bring the distance a little bit further out to 40 pixels, and the size up to 40 as well. Maybe bring the opacity back a little bit. So this one is a little bit more of a traditional soft drop shadow. Let's make another copy and again, select the one on the bottom. And this is gonna be more of a cast shadow. So I'm gonna bring the size back down to zero. I'll make the color of it kind of a light gray. I'll go to 70% brightness for a light gray. And then I'm gonna bring the opacity back up to 100 and set the blending mode to normal. Then I'm gonna make as many copies of this drop shadow as Photoshop will let me, which happens to be seven more copies for a total of 10 drop shadows. 10 is the maximum number of any one effect you can create. All right, then with these eight gray drop shadows, I'm gonna start at the top. This one has a distance of 40, and I'm gonna give it a size of one. Super subtle, but the next one down, I'm gonna give it a distance of 60 and a size of two. Next one down, distance of 80 and a size of three next 100 and a size of four, and so on and so on. So as these shadows get further from the letters, they get just a little bit softer. Of course, this can also look cool if you just keep them super sharp and graphic, but with all these stacked up, it's actually surprisingly dimensional for being a totally fake cast shadow. All right, moving on, we've kind of been avoiding the bevel and emboss effect, kind of the all powerful effect here at the top. So tip number seven for using bevel and emboss, get to know the contour tab. So I've got bevel and emboss here at its default settings. I'll crank the size up to maybe 90, and I'm gonna make the whole effect a little bit more exaggerated by turning the depth up to maybe 200, and I'll bring the highlights all the way up and set them to add. So this is a nice effect, but there's something a little bit lumpy about it. I'd really like to have a nice, smooth, bubbly, rounded shape. And with these settings, if I were to imagine a cross section of the letters right now, it would look like this. The bevel has basically created 45 degree angles going up. I've made the size large enough that the angles are meeting up with each other. And the reason we're not seeing a sharp corner on top is that the technique is set to smooth mode. If I change it to chisel hard, this will show you the actual underlying shapes the effect is creating. So smooth mode is a good start, but if we really wanna control the shape of the letters, that's what the contour tab is for. And in the contour settings, these different curves kind of represent the different shapes the bevel can be other than just a 45 degree angle. So this smooth curve preset really does round things out nicely. The range slider is confusing and that's because it's a bit misleading. I don't wanna complicate matters here, but since they designed the program this way, I feel like somebody should explain it. It's a little hard to put into words, so I'll try to illustrate it in the little diagram. 
The range is measured from the inside corner of the bevel, and while you would think the percentage would be 100% of this whole distance, it's actually 100% of this distance plus some imaginary distance that's twice as big. Maybe there's a reason for that, I don't know what it is, but a range of 50% is actually covering the entire beveled edge. And if you're trying to make some really custom shape, it definitely helps to know that. In this instance, it's actually neither here nor there because when I crank it up to 100, it kind of just looks better anyways. All right, that was a lengthy one. Here's a simple one, tip number eight, use an inner shadow to elevate your bevel and emboss. And what I mean is that the bevel and emboss effect is so procedural with highlights on one side and shadows on the other, and the real world is just not that strict. So if I add an inner shadow, and even at default settings, but maybe with the size brought up a little bit, it just creates a little bit of shading that even shows up on the bright sides. And I think that helps to make it look a little bit more realistic. All right, and that kind of hints at tip number nine, which is just a reminder that sometimes it's helpful to be subtle with the effects. So we haven't used any outer glow. Let's add one of those, and I'll make it red to match the letters, bring up the size a little bit, and if I bring the opacity back to just 20% and let that be really subtle, it doesn't really read as some kind of bright glowing effect. It just adds a little bit of haze and kind of the idea of light bouncing around. All right, finally, tip number 10, and this one's gonna kind of break the rules of this video about layer style effects, but we'll call it the exception that proves the rule. The tip is give your image a subtle overall treatment, otherwise known as hide your Photoshopping. And what I mean is that no matter how much you tweak these effects, the final result is almost always gonna look a little bit digital and maybe a little bit plastic, so let's hide the Photoshopping. Now, if I've got the look of the type more or less how I want it, I'll use that crazy shortcut to make a merged copy, then I'll show you guys a couple of effects that I like to create kind of an organic, illustrated look. So the first is kind of a weird one. It's in the noise section, it's the median filter. It's kind of like a blur and kind of like a posterize, and I think it's in the noise section because you can use it to reduce noise. But at about six pixels here, it has this nice way of rounding out any sharp corners or artifacts, but keeping the edges and the colors nice and clean, kind of like a round paintbrush. Then my favorite filter for finishing an image, the camera raw filter. It's actually more like 40 filters rolled into one. And of course here you can eyeball the colors, crank up the contrast if you want, maybe make the whole thing pop a little bit more, and just kind of experiment with the various settings in here. I think especially because the median filter kind of softened the image out, I can crank up the sharpening quite a bit and almost always add a little bit of grain. All right, well, there we go. Nothing too extreme here, but when it comes to creating digital artwork, I'm all about hiding your tracks. When someone looks at it and doesn't know whether it's Photoshop or Illustrator or 3D, can't really tell how it's made, I always take that as a good sign. All right, well, I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial and maybe learned something along the way. If so, please do hit the like button. I appreciate that. Thank you to the texturelabs.org Patreon supporters, and thank you for watching. I will see you next time.